Yeah, um, I see someone started the recording. Sarah, if you, well, I don't know if we need to do a double on this one, um, but just uh, good uh, to have okay. someone recording for background. Yeah, I'll start recording um, once it starts to as a backup. Okay, excellent. Thank you. All right, so we're at the nine o'clock bell, so I will get this started. Um, again, yeah, for the other DNR co-hosts, if you could just keep an eye on the waiting room because we haven't uh, received all our registered uh, members of the public yet, so I'm assuming a few will join late. So if you could just submit for that, that would be much appreciated. With all that being said, um, we have a, a pretty full list of people speaking. Again, if everyone that registered shows up, so I want to get started on this. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to the CWD Response Plan Review Public Input Meeting. And thank you all for taking the time to be here. So for folks that maybe this is the first time uh, joining one of these meetings, my name is Kurt Rollman and I am the committee leader for this current CWD response plan review. The committee is made up of representatives from a diverse set of stakeholder groups. And the committee has been meeting to provide input on this current five-year response plan review. The full committee charter and roster can be found on the DNR's CWD response plan webpage, which can be dnr.wi.gov and type in the search bar CWD response plan. And you can find that document and some more information. Um, I will go into the review process uh, in a little more detail in, in a presentation here after I'm done with kind of these logistics, but I do wanna to touch on a few Zoom items as I think we're all very used to now uh, in the, the year plus of Zoom land, but uh, please everyone mute your mics until it's your time to comment to reduce background noise for everyone on the call and to let everyone focus on the person that is speaking. If anyone is joining via the phone, uh, the, the way to unmute is star six, and that's to, to mute again as well. If anyone is experiencing IT issues, you can use the chat function to reach out to one of the hosts. It'd be a private message to one of the hosts. We do have the chat turned off for general messages though, um, and that is to focus the attention on those that are speaking and not have side conversations going on in the chat. So again, the chat is used for IT issues, um, private messaging to hosts. And as people join this meeting, I think you got the prompt that this meeting is being streamed via YouTube and is also being recorded. Um, committee members that are not able to attend this meeting today will be watching the recording to hear all the input that comes through the day. Um, we have some committee members here on Zoom currently, and then there are some that are watching via YouTube as well. And as far as the kind of run for this meeting, um, shortly again, I will do that presentation with a little more background on the review that we're in currently and the technique that we're using for this review, then we will start the public comment. For that comment period, I will call on a name from the registration list and it'll be their turn for comment. Um, we will not be doing any Q&A or having discussion around the comments just to make sure that we get through all, all the comments and stay focused um, uh, with the time frame that we have. So once a comment is done or the time is up, we will move on to the next person on the list. And reminders for the people that are here to comment today, please be respectful and use appropriate language. Please keep the comment related to the CWD and the response plan. Commenters that do go off topic will be asked to, to stay on the topic or their time will be ended. Each commenter will have five minutes. Um, at five minutes, you'll be asked to end your comment and we will move on to the next. And again, I'm seeing a few more people join here, which is excellent. Uh, we're getting more of our public register registrants come in, but thanks everyone for their time um, and your participation in this process. And I will start sharing my screen and go into the, the next step here real briefly. All right. Um, I'll ask Christine or Jen, is my screen coming up all right? It is. Excellent. 
So uh, again, as I stated, this will be a, a brief overview of our review process and also the technique that we're using um, in this process because it is different than the previous five-year review. And then we'll, we will get into the, the time for the comment. So why we are here today is a review of this CWD response plan. And it is a 15 year plan with the dates of 2010 to 2025. The plan guides the department's approach to addressing CWD in Wisconsin. The stated plan goal is minimize the area of Wisconsin where CWD occurs and the number of infected deer in the state. The plan has a long list of objectives. There's a progress summary produced yearly. That progress summary is on the response plan webpage that I mentioned earlier. And also this plan has a review every five years. And again, the reason we're here today is we're currently in the second review, this, the second five-year review. So as I mentioned, um, different than the previous review, we're using a, a different process. And this process is called structured decision making. And uh, <clears throat> the background with structured decision making is it's a transparent approach. It deconstructs, analyzes, and synthesizes the issue. It explicitly integrates stakeholder interests. And as I mentioned before, our committee is made up as a diverse set of stakeholders. and a uh, great way to get input through that. And then also obviously the public comment uh, that we're getting today and also through our web mail that we've been getting comments throughout as well. And then there's a clear role for science in the structured decision-making process. So why was SDM selected for this review? I think we can all agree CWD response is a complex problem. There's no silver bullet and every action has positives and negatives and have to work through those trade-offs and, and the positive or negative consequences of each action. So STM can help tackle those problems in a robust and transparent way. And again, the goal is to capture input effectively and integrate it into the decision making. So the input from the committee and again, these public input um, processes that we have going on right now. So a little more detail on SDM is this chart here kind of breaks down the steps. Um, again, I'm not going to be uh, going to each one in a ton of detail, but to, I guess, kind of sh show the process the committee's been uh, working on in this review. So it starts with a problem statement or identifying a problem. So basically starting at the beginning and then working towards objectives. So things that the, are important to that problem, things that are important to accomplish essentially for that problem. Then a really important part here in the SDM process is the metric. So that's the arrow off that second um, blue circle, the objective circle. And the metrics, that, that's another <clears throat> way to say measurements. So a way to measure your progress towards that objective or measure um, the impact of, of that objective. So, and that's really important for anything. Uh, we wanna measure where we're going, but the nice thing about SDM is essentially um, that's part of the process. That's something you need to do to, to, to complete SDM. So it's, it isn't something that can be skipped, so to speak. Then after objectives become, comes the alternative side. And the alternative side, that's another way of saying actions. And that's where a lot of committee processes and a, a lot of people start with, the actions. That's where the rubber hits the road, where you really want to get things done because that, that's where you affect the problems, what you're doing on the ground. But sometimes if you start with the actions and don't have clearly defined measurements or objectives that can lead to difficult uh, assessments of where you're headed and maybe you're, you're off target even with your objective. So it's important with the SDM that that is uh, a step after you, you clearly define your measurements and objectives. But these alternatives, again, are the actions. It's what you can do. So specifically for this, obviously, what you can do for CWD response. But then once all those three steps are clearly defined, then it helps show these next two blue circles, the trade-offs and the consequences. So again, there's no silver bullet here. There's pluses and minuses to every action, completing every objective. So you can see what one um, maybe is the 
best of both worlds, or yeah, I can see what objectives may be um, accomplishing one has less impact on the others, et cetera. And again, SDM really helps with that, that kind of, uh, it's in the name, the structured process going through these steps. Then when you get through those steps, you can have an informed decision and decide and take action. So this next slide is a, a very basic kind of um, overview of, of what STM is trying to accomplish. So real briefly, the, this problem, the problem statement for this example is you're traveling to a business meeting in another state and you need to select a flight to arrive before noon, but you wanna think about budget and you wanna think how comfortable the experience is. So on the left of the table here are the objectives, the things you care about. Then you have the metrics, the things that measure those, um, those objectives. And then you have the different alternative actions to accomplish those um, tasks. Task. So in these cases, it's different flights. As you can see from the example, there isn't one that's perfect that has three red or four red circles. So you have to decide if accomplishing objective one is more uh, um, important than taking a little bit longer flight in objective two. But again, it, it really, going through this, you have to go through all the steps and you get to see um, this laid out before you and really weigh the trade-offs and the consequences. And this table here is actually a, a product of STM. It's called the consequences table and something that the committee is working towards. This isn't uh, a new idea to natural resources. One good example is a neighboring state. I'm not going to go into the example, but just show that it is being used. Um, this is uh, from example in Minnesota, sharp-tailed grouse harvest. Um, they use STM to, to help with um, some of their harvest management. This is a consequences table that they had. Objectives, again, on the far end of the table, measurements and the metrics, and then the different actions. And you notice there wasn't one that had all green squares, but they could use this to weigh the, the consequences of each decision and had come to an informed decision. So where the committee is at currently um, with this process, we have had four meetings so far, and you'll notice the, the titles of these meetings are the steps that I outlined before, objectives, metrics, alternatives, and working towards uh, consequences and, and working through the process. Now, really important to state with STM, it is iterative, it builds off each step, but you can go back to a step previously. So this public input process now is very important still for the objectives and very important for the metrics. Each meeting, there's a time to look back at the objectives and each meeting the objectives have been changing as we get further down the path. Sometimes a metric may reshape an objective or realize the objective wasn't quite worded right. So nothing is set in stone yet. The input today, from today's meeting will be very um, important for the committee to inform their decisions as they're still working working through these steps. But just because um, an objective meeting is done, the objectives are, are far from done and each time they, they do uh, get tweaked, changed or rewritten. So uh, just a real important to, point to make with this process and STM just kind of in general. But again, this is the kind of outline of where the committee has been working and where they're headed. And so speaking of the importance of the input, I do want to get into the input because again, um, with everyone that has signed up and the time that's allotted for each person, uh, we're going to be at a full two hours, but I think it was really important to give everyone as much time as possible. So the, the goal today is for people to provide input to the committee to help inform this five-year review. And again, as a reminder, as I stated earlier, please keep the comments respectful. Please keep the comments on topic to the CWD and the response plan. And please keep the comments on time. As the speaker is called, I will start a five minute timer. And when that timer is up, you'll be asked to end and we'll move on to the, the next person. Um, if your comment ends before the five minutes, obviously we'll just move on to the next person and just keep going through um, the list of people. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'll bring up the registration list and I'll just call on a name. If they're not present, we'll just move on to the next person in the list. So stop sharing my screen. And get my registration list up. And start with our first commenter, um, it'd be Joan Hollingsworth. And I apologize if I get some last names wrong as we're going through here.
All right, I'm not seeing Joan on the list and not hearing her. So we can always come back if someone does join late. Um, next on the list, Al Godek. Not seeing there either. And I guess everyone is nicely named because of registration. You can see. Maybe I'll just start with the list that I have here then in the chat. So just going as they appear in the participants list, we'll start with uh, Douglas Duran. Good morning, I trust you can hear me. Yep, coming through great, Doug. I'm Doug Duran, landowner and hunter in Richland County. I'm an adopted dumpster and adopt a kiosk partner, CDAC member, concerned citizen. I'd like to note first that we are holding a doe derby with the check-in location being on my family farm during, farm during next week's antlers hunt to encourage hunt participation and access to private land. You can find information about that hunt on sharingtheland.com. I'm excited to report there's a lot of interest and excitement growing around the antlers hunt in our area because of this um, derby. Our Richland CDAC is a frustrated group. We've asked for additional tools through the proper channels to help us reduce and control population and reduce prevalence and slow the spread of CWD. For many reasons, those tools have not been granted. In the past five years, we have seen a shift in attitudes of citizens and hunters in our area, the core area of CWD, about CWD and a gr growing majority in our area want more done to control the disease. In listening to the previous stakeholder sessions, it has been suggested multiple times that DNR prefers to stick with things that they can actually do and avoid things that need legislative change or things that are under another agency's purview. I can understand that approach, but that severely limits any potential utility of a statewide CWD management or response plan. Yes, the legislature took, took tools like earn a buck away never enabled others, and deer farms, some with hundreds of cases of CWD, are managed by DATCAP. What Wisconsin needs is a unified approach to CWD, not one limited by agencies who want to stay in their own lane and who do, want to, who do not want to stir the pot with the legislature or the governor's office. Why not be bold? We all agree that CWD is a threat to the viability of our deer resource in Wisconsin and everything that builds off that resource. Why not develop a unified plan for CWD in Wisconsin, one that is blind to what DNR currently can and cannot do, and instead build one around science and best management practices. One that could actually be meaningful in changing the direction of CWD in Wisconsin. You clearly have the expertise in some of the stakeholders who are part of this process. Why not utilize their expertise to develop the best possible CWD plan and then put an asterisk beside those activities that would need legislative change or are under another agency's control. Put that plan out there and then let the people of the state of Wisconsin decide what comes next. Be bold. Do it for the resource. Do it for the future. Those are my comments. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Doug. Move on to the next in the list of participants, Amy Mueller. Amy, I see you're on the list. Um, you're still muted if you're trying to speak. Oh, I'm here. Thank you. Um, I'll keep my comments uh, very brief. I am relatively new to the CWD discussion. But I echo the comments of the previous uh, presenter in that I do think the DNR needs to be bold. And I think it needs to be an inclusive plan that looks at holistically at our resources, including how we manage our wolves, which could be a key factor in preventing the spread of CWD. That's all I ask. Thank you very much. Thank you for the comment. Moving on to next in the list, we have Melissa Smith. Thank you, I'm here. 
Sorry, let me just get my comment up. I appreciate uh, this forum and thank you for being here today. Uh, we do, uh, Great Lakes Wildlife Alliance, like to express the importance of large carnivores, including wolves, bears, and mountain lions in reducing the spread of CWD. Uh, we would also like to emphasize that trophy hunting of predators in the state was impacting the spread of CWD throughout not only deer, but also elk populations. And to reduce predator populations to lower the natural levels, uh, is de detrimental. Now, we don't know for sure the science on it, but every year we learn more. I was just reviewing this last night in 2015. We knew little and in, in 2021. Now we have two peer-reviewed articles that do show that predators help. Uh, our organization should suggest limits to the amount of trophy hunting and trapping permitted in CWD hotspots to allow predators to fulfill their ecological role. We also want to submit comment that bear dog training artificially displaces deer by chase, and that if we're going to go county by county on deer baiting bans, we should probably do that for the same for CWD for bear baiting. I've got a bunch of pictures. In fact, even our own bear bait uh, has lots of deer who doesn't like French toast, right? So uh, we also suggest that, and unfortunately not going to be popular, that we, while I love technology, we should discontinue the registration of deer uh, by phone or by cell phone and come to a station so that scientists are able to sample and and test deer. Uh, the, the previous administration's uh, essential stance was if you don't test, you won't know. <laughs> and that's just not scientific. Um, I, you know, well, prion disease is, is scary. It's uptake in plants. Um, and we believe that not enough is being done to, for CWD. And not only for, and we're not an anti-hunting organization by, by far, but uh, worry about hunters consuming the meat um, and about proper waste disposal and that uh, deer should be registered in person for those things. And there have been two major papers showing that uh, predators, natural predators can help curtail or at least curtail the spread, certainly not cure CWD, but um, you know we do want to argue for a more holistic approach, as you were saying, for CWD, I went to the CWD uh, symposium uh, by the C by the CDC a few years ago, and um, you know, kind of terrified me. <laughs> but um, I'm not saying prions will jump, but if they do, it's going to be detrimental to the deer herd. It's going to be agriculture versus deer, like we haven't seen, or wildlife. So I really feel that, um, as you were saying, we need to take a bold approach. And if that is rolling back things that make things convenient then we should do so. Thank you very much. All right, thank you for the comment. Going down next to the list is Mike Foy. Hello. Coming through Hello. great, Mike. Okay. Um, Thank you for having me. My name is Mike Foy, and uh, I appreciate you letting me speak to you today. These comments are my, for myself only. My family owns a small farm in Iowa County, and I have been a deer hunter for over 50 years. Last year, five of 10 deer harvested off our land were CWD positive, and the last three deer I've personally taken have all been sick. I've been following the CWD response response plan review committee discussions closely and I'm greatly heartened that they appear to recognize the great threat that CWD presents to our Wisconsin deer herd, our food supply, hunting, recreation, culture, and economy. In particular, I am happy to see that the DNR and committee do not appear to be accepting without question the goals, strategies, and recommendations of the current response plan, what I consider to be a very weak document. I would even go so far as to say that I am excited that you are looking for real solutions to reduce CWD to tolerable or nuisance levels using tools such as the interactive Ventana model. As you continue with your discussions, I have three suggestions. First, don't overlook the environmental impact statement on rules to eradicate chronic waste and disease from Wisconsin's free ranging white tailed deer herd which was published by DNR in 2003 using the best available agency in academic science at the time. I would venture to guess that many on the committee are not even aware that this document exists as the department bizarrely walked away from it in the mid 2000s and is not even available in its original format 
on the department's website. Although now dated somewhat by subsequent research, I highly recommend this document to guide and inform the committee for its can-do spirit, which I found sorely lacking in the subsequent five and 15 year response plans. The parts of the EIS are certainly harsh compared to current recommended best management practices. It is tempting to speculate that Wisconsin today might be considered a model for CW management if we'd hone more closely to this original document. Second, please, please, please don't continue to write off Southern Wisconsin and particularly Southwest Wisconsin as some sort of endemic area where nothing can be done about this terrible disease because it's so prevalent already. As a Southwestern Wisconsin hunter and landowner, I will never forgive the 2013 Deer Trustee Report for recommending that Wisconsin take a passive approach to CWD management in the South and then focus instead only on the outbreak areas of the disease. CWD continues to increase in prevalence and distribution, even in Southwest Wisconsin. And it's hard for me to escape the conclusion that far from being endemic anywhere, the disease is epidemic in Wisconsin when considered from a statewide perspective. Finally, consider giving more attention to providing annual prevalence estimates for every county or DMU in the state. Currently, DNR estimates, estimates prevalence trends for less than half of the area within the top 10 highest CWD prevalence counties in the state, not to mention the other 24 counties with known CWD detections. Not only will this better inform citizens and government leaders of the growing threat of CWD to Wisconsin's wild deer herd, but it will help Wisconsin citizens and businesses better consider the risk of eating and processing tested and untested venison in Wisconsin. I find it interesting that Wisconsin prevalence estimates are used to calculate minimum sample sizes for CW surveillance in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina, yet you cannot find a prevalence estimate for Adams or Crawford County right here in our own state. I re recommend that the committee review the fish consumption advisories that DNR and DHS regularly published for lakes and rivers across the state and consider if a better effort can be made to inform the folks that consume the undeniably thousands of unsampled CWD positive deer that are uh, consumed every year in Wisconsin. Thank you for your time and thank you for considering my comments. Excellent, thank you for that comment. Moving on to the next would be in the list, Sam Kramer. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, Samuel Kramer here. Um, we might be getting some background noise. Mike, could you mute your mic? Excellent. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Sam, and your timer is starting now. Uh, new to this also, um, and I just wanted to thank you for allowing me the uh, uh, time to speak. I'm not going to take the, the whole, whole, whole five minutes. Um, I, I come from the perspective of uh, my family owning some land also in Richland County, um, and I, I heard another individual speak about uh, the, the issue of CWD becoming more and more um, accepted and understood. Um, and addressed within that area being one of the core zones. And you could probably put me in that group too, as we have had um, a number of deer test positive over the last two or three years, uh, the first ones on our, our property. And so since it's right here, um, my interest and my uh, concern has just naturally grown. Uh, that interest and concern is not shared throughout the state, uh, particularly in areas where the CWD is not not prevalent, and even obviously denied in in uh, in some cases. And like most deer hunting camps, we really enjoy having friends and family come and share in the experience. Many of which are from out of town. Many of my uh, um, surrounding landowners are are not only out of town, but they're out, out of state who harvest deer, um, and uh, then un unfortunately they're 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 left to um, bring the meat back with them. Um, other people br bringing the, the rest of the, of the deer carcass back with them too across 
state lines. Um, so I just wanted to highlight the fact that uh, I, I don't know what, but I, I would like to see more done um, around education and getting people to understand, particularly in those areas uh, where CWD is not prevalent. Um, so to, to prevent the, uh, the, the spread into those areas. Um, I'll leave my comments um, at that um, and thanks for having me. Thank you for the comment. Moving on to the next in the list will be Terry Ann Berzuski. Hello. Can Hello. You hear me now? Yep, Hello. we're coming through. Oh, good. Um, I actually don't have any prepared comments, but I do have several questions. Maybe you can answer them, maybe not. But it's something I've been curious about. First of all, um, how successful have the current uh, program has been in either, well, it's not going to eliminate, but reduce the incidence of CWD. So this isn't a question and answer session. So if you want your questions to, to be out there, um, you certainly can state them. They're on the record then, and then the committee can take that into consideration. Okay, well, then we'll have to do that because like I said, I have not prepared any written statement to take up my five minutes. Um, I am curious about what has been done and how things are working. How does Wisconsin compare to other states as far as CWD control? Um, I also <clears throat> hunt out in Iowa County and I've noticed a, I won't say increase, but a presence of CWD deer out there um, several deer I have shot in past years have been tested positive. Um, I don't know what, to, what else can be done about them. Uh, we're certainly not going to eliminate all the deer. So anyway, uh, that's about all I have to say. I'm just curious about some things and maybe I should address them in some other manner. That's it. All right, thank you very much for your time. And going on to the next in the list is Tom Hauge. Uh Good morning, Kirk, and, and thank you uh, for this opportunity to speak with you uh, this morning. Um, today, uh, well, I serve as the president of the Sauk County Conservation Alliance, which uh, includes all of the hunting and fishing clubs uh, in Sauk County, uh, also a landowner of Sauk County, I hunt Sauk County and Richland County, and all of the properties which we do our deer hunting has have um, had positive animals. Um, so it is a, a serious concern to me personally and as well to all of our uh, member club organizations. Um, I also have been following closely the CWD response plan uh, meetings and appreciate the opportunity to uh, witness those uh, discussions. <coughs> Excuse me for a sneeze. Um, in particular, I has, uh, had a lot of interest in the more recent presentations by the Ventana uh, group, which has been um, doing a lot of modeling to help the committee um, with their decision making of interest uh, was the analysis that they did that indicated that um, following the 2020 deer season that um, our post deer hunting uh, population count um, included some 50,000 estimated deer across the state that were CWD positive at that time. Um, they, they further broke that down um, and provided county by county uh, breakdown of that post 2020 deer hunt uh, population of CWD positive animals. Um, statewide, it was estimated to be 50,000 CWD positive animals and in Sauk County, their estimate was about 10,000 CWD um, positive animals. So we, we may well have more positive animals on the landscape in Sauk County than any of the other counties. That's not something that we're uh, proud of and uh, we're very concerned about. In addition, uh, based on past research uh, by Dr. Mike Samuel and colleagues, he's 
he shared with folks that once an, uh, an animal is CWD uh, positive, basically, um, you can expect uh, that the life expectancy for a CWD positive buck is only four, an additional four months on average, and for a doe, an additional six months on average. So that that means that in if, if accurate, uh, following the 2020 deer season, those 10,000 CWD positive deer in Sauk County were all dead. And if again, if that is accurate, um, that's more deer than we took in the 2020 deer season uh, by all of the seasons combined, archery and gun. So we are very concerned um, and uh, we are definitely recommending that uh, Wisconsin move beyond a passive approach for CWD uh, response into a much more active uh, role. In our county at the Spring uh, Conservation uh, Congress hearings, we passed resolutions um, both in 2019 and in 21, um, asking that the department or state of Wisconsin conduct a pilot uh, to test the use of financial incentives um, like they do in the farm bill uh, to encourage landowners and hunters to take more and target CWD positive deer. We need to get more CWD positive deer off the landscape to reduce the current pre prevalence rate as well as to try to reduce the, sp the spread. So um, specifically in terms of requests to the committee uh, for incorporation in your final report. Um, number one, we would request that, or request that the committee request that the department uh, survey hunters and landowners in 2022 to, to determine what incentives would be the most effective in terms of getting them to take more CWD positive deer. Further, we would request that the department uh, our, we would request the committee to request the department to conduct uh, a pilot incentive program in 2022. Third, um, we think the advisory committee is performing a very important role, um, but it appears to be at least an ad hoc or temporary committee. We request that the committee request that DNR make the CWD Advisory Committee a permanent standing committee, just as they have for the Deer Advisory Committee, the Black Bear Advisory Committee, a whole host of species uh, types of committees. Um, our fourth uh, request was is that the Advisory Committee um, discuss, um, but in particular, recommend that the department utilize its authority to require mandatory CWD sampling in order to accelerate the uh, CWD testing data to, uh, to help us better um, track this disease and make the important decisions that we do. Many other states, our neighbors, um, require mandatory CWD sampling in their areas of concern. And for one reason or another, Wisconsin has not. The five minute timer has uh, gone up, Tom. So appreciate the, the, the comments. And, but with that, um, kept everyone to five minutes to be fair for everyone. That was the rule that was stated at the beginning of this meeting. Um, but also a lot of the people that have joined um, or had registered, did not join the meeting. So at this point, again, well, we set our rules at the beginning based on registrants um, and uh, just uh, the, the world of, of Zoom and uh, the way this works. Uh, we're, we're at the end of the people that have shown up to the meeting and with no one else in the waiting room and none of the other registered people joining, I think we will end this public comment period. Again, thank you to everyone that watched on YouTube. Thank you to everyone that took the time today uh, to comment. Um, I know members of the committee were on YouTube. There's been members of the committee that heard um, through Zoom, and then also all members of the committee that were not able to uh, listen uh, currently. They will be watching the recording and using these comments to inform this five-year review um, through the rest of this committee process.
So with that, um, again, appreciate everyone's time and we'll end this public input process, uh, this meeting, but the process is not done. Our CWD webmail, um, response plan webmail is still available for anyone that wants to comment. Um, and that is again on our DNR response plan webpage, dnr.wi.gov and share my screen here. Um, and if you type in the search bar, a CWD response plan, that'll bring you there. The webmail is on the lower right portion of that um, uh, website. And again, uh, those comments go directly to the, the committee um, for informing their decisions as well. So I wrap this up and thank you all again for your time. Katie, you can go ahead and end the stream.